Mirror Engine is a TypeScript game engine. We've gotten this question a ton, and so stay tuned at the end if you're curious what we are built on top of. Version 5 has a ton of new features, a lot of quality of life updates, so let's dive right in. I have this Mirror logo here. I can click Add Script, or I can attach an existing script, and boom, that is immediately there. What's unique about Mirror Engine is that this is mirrored multiplayer, so everything is mirrored. It's all one system. Whenever you're building this together with friends, it will all occur in real time. So for example, if I just make a small change to my rotate script here, and this is suddenly instantly changing for everyone all at the same time. This is real-time synced mirrored multiplayer. We're still working out some kinks for sure. <laughs> still got some issues. This is an alpha, but uh, we're making very rapid progress. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, you'll be right at home because TypeScript is just a great superset of JavaScript. So anything you like in JavaScript is there. You don't have to use TypeScript, but it also make your life a lot better. We use an entity component system. So we are simply attaching a script to our mirror logo here. Uh, you can ignore a lot of the boilerplate, but we have very simple hooks from just calling initialize for whenever the first script, the script first loads to update called every frame. And that gives you the delta time between each frame. So very simply here, we're just declaring a rotate amount and then rotating the entity. This is just the basic script that we use whenever you add a new script. For example, if I add this cube here, if I can add any number of cubes, then that is already good to go. Importantly too, that these scripts are all attached to each other actually. So for example, if I, let's say I'll delete this other entity over here. And then for this new cube I added, instead of this, whatever just boilerplate script I used, I wanna use the same exact mirror logo script, then boom, that is already rotating right there. There we go. Then this cube is rotating with the exact same script. So again, if I change the speed of this script, for example, just to rotate one on each delta, then that's gonna start rotating right there uh, because it's all running the same script for these different entities actually. And this is a great way, for example, so if you had multiple enemies and you all want those, say zombies, for example, to run the exact same zombie script, then great, you can do that. You just write the script once, it's a class, um, if you're new to game development, don't worry about some of the boilerplate. We have a great new doc section that we'll dive deeper into. You just attach the zombie script to all of those and boom, you're ready to go. What you'll quickly notice too is that this is not just a game engine, it's also the game itself because this in-game editor, we're not actually like starting and stopping in this game here. It's not like we have to compile it and then we run it. In fact, a key thing about Mirror Classic, if you've been with us for a sec, is that because everything is in real time, notice on the bottom left over here, we have both build mode and we have play mode. So now you can press one button and boom, I'm actually now my character over here. I was way off in the distance off screen that you couldn't see, but I'm just running around kind of doing my thing now. Um, I'm actually interacting with this game world. Uh, right now, you're just a blue particle trail. It kind of <laughs> looks like from Ghostbusters. But anyway, it's just a, a placeholder right now because we're still working on some animation implementations. Uh, but then what I can do is just press B again, and boom, I'm actually instantly building this right here. Um, and I can just hover over my character particle placeholder, we might call it, uh, user two for play mode there, uh, press B, and now we are right back to that. And again, any change I make to um, any scripts in game, anything I do, that all is reflected in real time. And again, this is multiplayer synced, still working out some kinks there. Uh, play mode has a bit of issues for V5. We'll get that done soon to get it fixed, but um, this is all real time collaborative. Everything saves to the database. And so if you log in, log out right here, boom, this is still already there. It's real time, it saves, you're good to go. Other important quality of life updates. We mentioned that we're an entity components system. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. Just know that this is, you just create entities and you add components to them. For example, lights, it could be physics. It could be the way it's rendered, things like that. So I can just create a new entity here, this box, turn on the lights. I may actually go from spotlight, which is kind of like a desk lamp to an omni light, which is much more like a campfire. Um, this is all nicely rendering here. And we can also change the color, a lot more on this to come, but let's do kind of a red here. And we've also refined our physics a, a bit. And so we still have a lot more in the works here, a lot of cool stuff that we're gonna add on the physics side. This is built on the Bullet Physics Engine, which is used even for robotics computing. So there's a ton of stuff you can do here. Kinematic, you'll use mostly for anything that you move around. We'll get more depth on that later, but let's go ahead and click dynamic. And now this box is actually moving around here because it's just it's running in world. Also good quality of life update. Hit Command C or Control C, depending if you're on Mac or Windows or Linux, and this will copy, and then we can just paste that there, and then add this new entity in world as many times as we want. Copy and paste is a lot of fun. It's going to copy over all those settings that you already have uh, for that entity there, and our physics is running actually quite nicely. You also notice something on the bottom right that uh, you can also link the type of collision shape. If you're new to game development, it's essentially you got to separate out like what is actually being refer rendered on the screen as the graphics or versus what is it actually colliding with in world we make it super simple as the default what you see is what you get so these boxes here are something that is already being collided with you can unlink that and choose your own collision state for example if you want to do a sphere capsule cylinder cone whatever you'd like i'm going to go back to link and just keep that simple for now we'll dive deeper on that in future videos 
And then also something kind of fun. I'll probably get some lag here, which is just uh, part of the name of the game as we refine this game engine a bit. But what's nice is that, say I create this here and I'm gonna change this to, instead of a dynamic body, change this to a kinematic body. And I'm just pressing my hotkeys here, one, two, three, to change our gizmo type. And then now you'll see quite satisfyingly that this is actually affecting all of our physics in real time. So a lot of cool stuff that you can start to create here because this is all being simulated together in real time. Um, not all the exact same physics simulations will occur uh, just because it gets super complicated with networking. We're gonna improve that though, but just FYI at the moment, but you can kind of build whatever you want at the moment. A lot of fun stuff you can do. We also have a good few quality of life fixes. For example, there's a bug where if you selected the gizmo here while another entity was in front of it, then that would actually still select the other entity. Uh, but now that's nicely fixed here. So uh, you'll be in better spirits with having that fixed quite nicely. And within game development too, we know there's a ton of different stuff that you could quickly focus on and then still realize you have <laughs> You're only 1% of the way there to actually learning everything you can. So we wanna make that as simple as possible. So we have a ton of info buttons everywhere. We've done a major update to our docs page, but ideally our goal is that you never have to actually read the docs um, because we have all these small info buttons that you can hover over in world just to get a, a feel for what you're looking at, why that's there, what this means. And then if you ever have a request, something that you'd like change, just quick click this quick request button and then that'll shoot us a zit, shoot us a post, and we'd love to chat with you and see how we can improve. Let's head over to our new docs page. Uh, looking good, and there's still a lot of this is being improved. And so we're adding both getting started guides and scripting references, or sometimes these are, are separate in uh, some doc repos. This is all one and the same, so you'll notice that whether this is a guide or a reference just by its icon right here. And so we provide a basic walkthrough of what we're doing with entity scripting, build blown, play mode, etc. And then it, when you get to the scripting reference side, then that is actually, you'll see the TypeScript logo over here on the bottom left with references to this class, for example, our entity class. And let's go over to our light component, for example. And so since we were working with that earlier, we can click light component, then we'll see all our properties that we have. You can access the entity that the light is attached to. You can um, add this via scripting in world. Tons of cool stuff here from basic settings like the intensity, which are actually done from the UI itself, or you can do this script right here. There's the intensity that we can increase if we'd like. Of course, that can all be done by a scripting. Lots of cool stuff you can program here to shadows, to types, to cookies, to colors. Um, so much fun stuff in the works that we'll dive deeper on soon. And last but definitely not least, we've gotten the question quite a bit of, hey, you left to get out. What are you building on top of now? You'll notice up top here, we have our Mirror Engine core that we're importing. We are a fork of Play Canvas. And so we owe a huge thank you to the Play Canvas team for simply creating an awesome engine. We always wanna use the right tool for the job and building on top of Play Canvas has been a great breath of fresh air. And so if you head over to our docs here, you'll notice the quick shout out there. We wanted to give a huge thank you to the Play Canvas team because the engine's just awesome. Been a great breath of fresh air. We also dive in a bit more on our docs regarding API similarities, API differences. There's a lot more to come here and I guarantee you, you'll run into bugs as you work with some of this, but uh, we appreciate your feedback. We're very excited that you're excited for building with Mirror Engine. And then we are gonna continually extend this, add a ton of features. And you'll probably get the question of, well, hey, can we build anything that we can do on Play Canvas? And the answer is mostly. There are some similarities, but we're actually trying to abstract out a lot of the low level details. And that's, those are things such as multiplayer, such as scaling servers, asset loading, real-time collaboration, runtime optimizations, more to come there, your TypeScript compilation, accounts, databases, all that, that's just there. Everything I just showed you in this previous video is done like no setup. That was just, I went over here, I'm on the homepage, I click make a game and then boom, we are here in world uh, creating this right here. This is already multiplayer. This is already fully scriptable. We are all doing, oops. We're all doing this together in real time. Uh, so that's the key point with the Mirror Engine is we are just trying to make it so easy as an all-in-one game engine to quickly build amazing games and have a blast doing it. Because if you're building games, then shouldn't it be fun like a game? Like we could totally, there's a completely new paradigm that we are approaching Mirror Engine with here. So we're very excited. And so with that, thank you so much for your time. If you have questions, I uh, would love to chat more on YouTube, leave a comment, Instagram, TikTok, chat with us on X slash Twitter. We are very excited. Let's keep on building. Be sure to sign up for our alpha, subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much for your time and cheers.